one of the dishes that I really love to eat when I'm in the south of Thailand is called Gai Gale, a type of grilled chicken which is covered in a coconut milk kind of barbecue sauce. And so they have taken that dish and sort of reinterpreted it into a curry. Hey everyone, it's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com in Bangkok, Thailand. I just got off the BTS at Chitlom Station and for lunch today, Ying and I are heading to a restaurant called Paste. Chef Jason Bailey and Chef Kun B have been really good friends of mine in Bangkok for many years and I've eaten at their former location a number of times but I have never been for a full meal at their uh, updated location which is at Gaysorn Plaza. It is located on the third story, which is the top floor of Gaysorn Plaza, right in the heart of Siam in Bangkok. I am in the kitchen back here and gonna get a quick tour with Chef Kun B is gonna show us some of the machines that they use back here in the kitchen. And also she's getting ready to prepare all the dishes that we're gonna eat for lunch. I just, I just showed you. Um, okay. Behind the machine. What does this machine do? Separate the juice from the like if you have the lemon glass and then you boil the lemon glass with the water and then it will separate like uh, the the liquid from the from the meat and then you have like a really concentrated uh, liquid. We use the fresh coconut for the curry, so we do our own. Oh, so you have your own hydraulic yeah. press yeah. for fresh coconut milk. Yeah. And oftentimes you'll see them, these machines at Thai markets, yeah. but they have one in the kitchen, so they always have fresh coconut milk. <laughs> Chef Kundi just gave me a snack. This is an Irish oyster, and then they topped it with some uh, chili sauce. And then also with, this is called Bai Shakram, which is a, I think it's an herb, but it grows in salt water. There's nothing better than snacking in the kitchen. Oh wow, that oyster is so silky. It just melted in my mouth. And then the dressing is a little bit sour. That herb is a little bit salty as well and just sort of has a, a little bit of a fresh crispness and then with those crispy shallots. This kitchen is absolutely amazing. Not only can you get the aromas of the dishes they're cooking like the grilled meat and the grilled chicken and the dishes that are being fried in oil and all the sauces bubbling on the stove, but additionally you get all these aromas of the fresh herbs, the kaffir lime leaves, all the different citruses, the flowers. There are so many amazing smells coming out of this kitchen. This is one of my favorite ingredients. It's called, in Thai it's called Tok Tala. And in English it's a torch ginger flower. But the flower petals, they have a really amazing sour, sour taste to them. Oh, so this one is normal coriander and this one is wild coriander? Oh, okay. This is an amprik with no chili in it. So it's kind of like a, a dip. Mm. It's different. Uh, it smells like a little bit cinnamony or yeah. like it's got the cloves. Oh, cloves, okay. Nutmeg and nutmeg, okay. cinnamon. Okay. Ying and I are now sitting down in the main dining room to have lunch. All of the dishes are prepared. It's a really nice dining room. We got a view of Central World right across the road. The first thing that I'm gonna try right now is a type of namprik. And namprik is a Thai, usually it's a Thai chili dip or chili sauce. But this is a type of namprik that uses no chilies and it comes from, Chef Kun B was telling me, comes from an ancient cookbook. And then this is an ingredient on the very top which is a part of the lotus stem. 
the flavors are all really subtle. It almost tastes like a like a nutmeg jam. But then all of a sudden the crab comes through and it just melts in your mouth. And then you have the crispy cracker foundation. When I keep tasting different flavors, now I can really taste the clove in there strong. That crab, something that's really cool about paste is that they use a lot of ingredients and also experiment with a lot of ingredients that are old ingredients that are not commonly found uh, at markets in Thailand, but they've sort of, ingredients that have sort of uh, phased out yet are still um, a were, were previously a huge part of Thai cuisine. And so they use so many, such a variety of different herbs and flowers and um, spices that go into the cooking. I'm gonna start on the other dishes now and I will begin with the dish that is right in front of me, which is rainbow trout, uh, which I saw them in the kitchen. They prepared it, they took the piece of rainbow trout and in a pan with some oil, they shallow fried it. And then to plate it, they put it on the plate. First, first actually they added, it's a, like an herbal chili dressing, which is kind of soupy. And then they put the piece of rainbow trout down. And then the really cool thing is how they garnished it with thin slices of pineapple and also a fruit called salak, which is uh, snake fruit, which is a unique, has a unique um, kind of almost fermented taste to it. And then they finally topped it with a bunch of finely shredded white turmeric, and then also a handful of crispy pork skin, which looks like, it's like it's like shoestring pork skin. They're really finely cut and then just crispy and tangly all on top. I'm gonna take off some of that fish. Oh, there's, just, there's a, a wedge of lemon as well. Maybe I will, I'll squeeze that on later. Let me just take a piece of the fish first and then I will try to get some of that white turmeric as well. I think I'm just gonna have to destroy this beautiful creation. <laughs> and then that, that little piece right here, this is the, the snake fruit, because I wanna get everything in one bite and then put this all over onto my rice. Put this on the rice and let me get a few more of those tangly pork skins. Oh, and you can actually hear them crackling as they, they touch that, that juice, that soup. All right, I think I have managed to get everything in one bite. Oh, and also there's a piece of wild coriander on top of there as well. That's like a, a very citrusy, tangy fish with all that dressing. Oh, and I, I really love that piece of salak, the snake fruit, which is very, very unique in flavor. And it has kind of a, to me it sort of has a fermented, I always kind of compare it to a fermented apple. It's, it's it tastes like an apple a little bit, but it has more of a, yeah, like a fermented taste to it. And then a piece of pineapple, it's juicy and sour and then you get that crunch from the the very thin pork rind fried pork skin and then the turmeric is like a very very mild ginger the white turmeric but but very very mild in flavor and just sort of gives it a, a crisp texture i want to taste that broth real fast i think that's a, a chicken stock with herbs and and spices in it Oh, wow, if you take a spoon of that, that is unbelievable. I think it's chicken stock based and you can really taste toasted fried garlic in there. So many different flavors. Oh man, that's incredible. I'll squeeze on just a little bit of the lemon for this next bite. And I gotta add a bit more of that juice as well. I have a hanging pork rind. I have to follow it with a spoon of soup. I'm gonna move on to the crab curry. This dish is called Gang Pak Thai Bu Chakachan Pek Thai Dam. And that is a, this is a Southern Thai style curry with Thai spanner crab, and then also with pepper, and then they garnished it with some um, 
some hummingbird flowers as well as some penny, pennywort leaves and then I saw him sprinkle it with a bunch of black pepper as well. When he was preparing this dish in the kitchen, I saw him first put a layer of boneless, a boneless shellless crab on the, in the dish. And then he scooped on the curry. The curry sauce was prepared separately in a pot. And then after that, he, uh, yeah, he scooped on all of that curry and then added some more crab and then seasoned it with a bunch of black pepper and all of the herbs. I know I have a lot of favorite things in the world, but shellless crab as well as Southern Thai curry is just hard to beat. Oh, and you can see how thick and rich that curry sauce looks. It's not a, I don't think it's a coconut milk based curry, but it's a, a very heavy herb uh, based curry, I think. And I think uh, probably some turmeric is in there to make it yellow as well. Yeah, and I'm sure there's just a, a huge amount of different herbs and spices that go into this. You can smell the spiciousness. Oh, that is a big bite. I think I can handle it. It has a sweet taste to it, but at the time, same time, it has this explosion of smoky flavor. You can taste the pepper in there, and then the shellless crab literally just melts in your mouth. I didn't even need to chew that. One of the dishes that I really love to eat when I'm in the south of Thailand is called Gai Gale, and it is a type of grilled chicken which is covered in a coconut milk kind of barbecue sauce. And so they have taken that dish and sort of reinterpreted it into a curry. And normally in the south it's, um, it's usually on a big bamboo skewer and then they grill it. And here in the kitchen they took a piece of chicken. I think it's an entire like a, it's like a breast with a drumstick or the, with the wing attached. And in the kitchen, they really smoked it out. I'm not sure what he put on the fire, but just smoke was pouring from the grill. And then he put the chicken on the grill and using a piece of lemongrass, he basted it in coconut milk. And then he um, just let the smoke pour over the grilled chicken. And then after that, they put it into a bowl and then covered it in the gravy curry sauce. Uh, which I believe is coconut milk based and then there should be some red chilies in there and then the final touch was a handful of crispy shallots on top and then also it's served with a, a pickle. Oh wow, <laughs> that just feels so tender as I press my spoon into it and this is the the breast side of it. Oh I got to get a little bit of that skin too. Okay I'll go for that piece and then let me add some of the the sauce to it That is so smoky. It almost tastes like bacon. And then at the same time, you can really taste kind of a, a smoky roasted coconut flavor. And then you can taste those red chilies in there. Maybe they sprinkled it with toasted coconut as well because I think I can taste a really definite like toasted coconut flavor. And then the chicken itself is really, really juicy and, and really, really tender. And then you can just actually taste the smoke just embedded fully into the chicken. Literally, it just kind of slips right off. The pieces of chicken are so tender. Go on to my rice. For this bite, I'll take some of the namajat, which is a pickle. And there are very thinly shaved cucumbers. And there are shallots in here. There is uh, coriander. I think both, this is, oh yeah, this is the difference between, this one here is wild coriander, and then this one is non-wild coriander um, and what else is in here uh, citrusy broth and then also you can even see like the pulp from something I'm not totally sure but I will add this to my bite for this for this time and then That gives it an extra refreshing taste. The dressing is a little bit sweet and tangy, but then filled with all of those really, really fresh and really finely chopped up herbs and vegetables and the cucumber. I just got a refill on rice, and this is the purple 
uh, rice berry. So this is a totally different rice. Everything is really good, but this crab curry is just unbelievable. Put that onto the rice berry. That crab is insane. As soon as Ying and I turned off the camera, we just sat here and completely finished off the food in minutes. It was so good. Uh, we are finished now. That was just a wonderful meal. Oh, you can really smell lemongrass. I think lemongrass. And it's icy cold. And also to end this meal, I am having a coffee. What I love so much about the food at Paste is that the flavors are so complex but balanced so perfectly well. And they use so many different ingredients in their cooking, but they keep the Thai taste. And it's, it's kind of modern, progressive Thai food. So they are always um, creating new combinations of ingredients, but still holding to the Thai balance of flavor. I think the chefs just have a, a real passion and also an acute knowledge of Thai flavor and Thai taste and it really comes through in the dishes. When I was talking with Chef Kun Bi, she mentioned that some of their signature dishes stay the same on the menu, but a lot of the dishes rotate uh, due to season and availability of ingredients. And also they're always constantly developing and progressing their menu, so they are experimenting with different ingredients and creating new dishes. Also, I do want to mention that I didn't pay for my meal just because they're nice and we are friends, uh, but I'm the one who actually asked if I could come here to Paste Gay Sword, and so this is not a sponsored video. If you are looking for a top-notch, uh, high-end, modern, progressive Thai restaurant in Bangkok, Paste is an amazing restaurant. Yeah, I love the food at Paste. Thank you all very much for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And also leave a comment below. And also make sure you subscribe for lots more food and travel videos. And I will see you on the next video. Oh,